using melodic percussion to motivate students to excellence in all aspects of their lives. That is the mission of CAFE, the Cultural Academy for Excellence. That's up next on Carib Nation. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, there is one clear choice. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. Both people inside and outside are very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you have traveled the journey. <laughs> one television organization brings America close to the people, stories and events that affects Caribbean life. Get close, get answers, get Carib Nation. As Caribbean people, we understand the importance of rhythm in our lives. It is our heartbeat and what we want and need to keep our spirits alive and buoyant every day. These young students of CAFE have embraced this concept as they have grown intellectually, academically, and musically as part of CAFE, the Cultural Academy for Excellence. Hi, I'm Doris Dean. Welcome to Carib Nation. Come with me as I take you on this journey into CAFE. We started in 1996 in my basement in Mitchellville. We started with um, 20 so students. And we were there for about uh, six months and someone saw us performing and asked me what was the thing that I needed most and I said space. We moved here in 1997. At the First United Methodist Church in Hyattsville, uh, Maryland, they have been very good to us. And over the years we have grown uh, a lot of struggles. We're a 501c3, so you know what that is like. Funding has always been yes, sort of elusive sometimes, but God is good. We've always found a way to make it work. And we are the Department of Family Services, Prince George's County, um, has been very supportive of us over the years and they have you know, helped us to keep our head above water. We are not able to pay a lot. Many of our tutors, instructors are volunteers, PhDs and the like. And we are able to attract a lot of students from the universities. Howard is a major uh, feeding source for us. Um, we've worked with Georgetown, um, GW, Maryland University. And um, in, in doing that and getting them to come in, I was able to write more proposals to expand the program. And the county uh, was interested in what we do, were doing. We also started a semester break program, which during the semester, during um, the spring semester, and any days off that they have from school, we bring the students in, and they also underwrote that, oh. that to help us expand. And then we are now starting a science and math component, and they are also um, we are hoping that they are going to underwrite that also. When I saw the commitment that these kids had to this instrument, because it's who we are, it's percussion. We are people of the 
beat, the rhythm, it's your soul. And I said, you know, I think I would like to do this, but I would like to use this as a hook mm -hmm. to have the kids do better um, with their academics. Mm -hmm. So that's why I added the academic component, which is math and language arts. Mm -hmm. So they do well in this, they get to perform, because the biggest thing they want to do is be on the stage to get that spotlight. We offer academics, we offer music theory, and we offer music practical. We, the students, have to prepare for examinations by the end of the year. We start in September and we end in June, and we have to have them prepared for examinations. The music examinations. The music examinations. They do the Associated Board of the Royal School of Music exams, which are administered um, from London, England. And we also do the practical exams, which are administered by the Creative Arts Institute at the University of the West Indies. We also have offer academics, each student um, gets at least two hours of academic tutoring. And most of our academic tutors are volunteers who come in and um, basically volunteer up to four hours per Saturday working with each student. I pretty much teach all, all the different musical aspects um, in CAFE. I, I'm involved with teaching the practical musicianship, which is how to play the instrument, um, where the students prepare an individual solo piece, and they work on scales and uh, rudiments and things like that. I also teach uh, a lot of the theory, um, which is kind of the math behind music, and I teach the steel bands as well. <laughs> We have some sort of roots in the Caribbean. Seeing that a pan was born in the Caribbean, right. we try not to limit it to Caribbean activities. Mm -hmm. I know? see. So we, yeah, you, you broadened it, yeah, of course, yeah, because steel band has gone worldwide. It's an instrument. Yeah. You know, the novelty of this new instrument. For, for a while, it was a novelty because it was the only or one of the latest instruments to be born. It's mm -hmm. only about 50 years old. Right. It, it came out somewhere a little after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, the instrument is moving on. It's being taught in schools all across America and around the world, mm -hmm. you know, so it's no longer um, just a, 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 what you call something for the cultural. A little, a little uh, niche uh, Yeah, type yeah. Of thing. it's being incorporated in bands all over the world. It's right. even on the the uh, curriculum of some universities mm -hmm. now, right. you know, right. so yeah. it's going places. Yeah.
steel band is one of the easier instruments to play. Really? Yes, you can learn a melody so in, about five, in, in about five minutes. Whereas, in a, like if you want to blow a flute or a trumpet, you got to have so many different positions. Yeah, and, and lippings and fingerings mm -hmm. and that it takes a while and posture and all That's of that. Right. All you need is, is a matter of striking, the technique how to strike, you know, because if you hold it too tight, you, 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 the note will not bounce at the shirt. Yeah. So there's a certain technique. Once you get those it's in the to wrist. play, yeah, it's a wrist movement. You know, that's, that's how you write right. those muscles to use, as, a, as opposed to the whole arm. Just right. Once you have these things, it's just a member. Um, in some aspects, it's about memory, mm. you know, because we memorize a lot. You have three kids, three children in cafe. Yes, I do. What are the ages and what brought you to cafe? Well, I have the three kids. Their name is Kenya. Kenya is 11. Amaya is seven, and Yara is six. And I originally came to cafe because my dad was one of the founders of cafe. He helped Miss Green um, in her basement, doing a lot of financial teaching to the students. And I was so impressed with the organization and him really giving back to um, the community that I al always wanted to be part of CAFE. And so once I had my kids, um, it took a while to get them there, but Kenya was the first to start. Mm -hmm. And I got Kenya in about three years ago. And I originally took a, cl uh, a class with CAFE for the adults, and I thought that if I uh, start PAN, I can really teach Kenya to progress. So I took an eight-week course with uh, Miss Burton, and I um, learned how to do the scales and learn some music. And I got Kenyon at the same time. So she started with cafe and she just started excelling more than me. So uh -huh. I, it was the reverse. She was really teaching me rather than me teaching I love her. That, the young mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> Once I got Kenya and I eventually got the others too. Yeah, and sure. so Niara and Maya came in the year after and I sat into their classes and I helped tutor with them in there. So it has been a great impact for all of us. Um, one being a family. Yeah, mother with daughter cafe. or family group uh, right. playing steel band. You can soon have your own band. Right, well I'm trying to <laughs> sometime. <laughs> But really, it's really CAFE because CAFE is the one that got us here together. Right. And just being a family and unity, it just shows that um, throughout the whole community that we can all work together as mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Belinda Caesar, you're a college lady. Yes, uh, I am. It's great to see you, great to talk with you. Uh, you grew up with CAFE practically. Yes, I did. I've been in CAFE since I was 12 years old. I could play any pen, 
the band, mm -hmm. but my two primary instruments are the double second and the bass. Double second and bass. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like the bass too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sit back there and have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you learn from CAFE, having grown up with CAFE, that helped you most in college? Um, with CAFE, with the th music theory classes, I was able to skip two classes in college last year, my first year. You were at Howard, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Howard in the music program, music education. Mm -hmm. And my theory teacher put me up in one of the higher classes. So you probably get through college earlier. <laughs> no, not really, because I started a, a semester late. I wasn't oh, I sure okay. what field of music, because they have different things, music therapy and all those different things. So I didn't make up my mind until like December. I see. And now you're sure what you want to do. You're yep, I'm definitely On sure. the right track to music education. Mm -hmm. Now you want to do music education, does that mean you want to help come back and teach or you want to teach music on a wider scale? Um, I want to teach music in, I'm not sure which county I want to go back to yet, but <laughs> I want to teach, I want to start bringing PAN into most of the public schools. Some of the public schools here have mm -hmm. the PAN program, like Northwestern up the street, my brother goes there, they mm -hmm. have a program. And I think there's another school um, somewhere in the Maryland and D.C. area that has it. There's only, that's only two schools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to bring it out because it's, it's enjoyable. You can play anything on it and, right. you know, can travel the world with it. So right. yeah. I'm trying to bring it into more into um, the D.C. and Maryland area to get, you know, so kids can have another choice of instruments. Right. <laughs> I was in this program called Shalom School that goes on during, like inside the church, and I was in that for about one and a half years, and the director of Shalom School talked to Ms. Green, and she asked me to be in CAFE, so I started, and now I've been in CAFE for about three and a half years. My daddy plays jazz and so he asked me to come and do gigs with him so I'm learning how to play the tenor real good and so I can go out and be with him Oh, fantastic. and then we can write music. So you've got a career already set up ahead of yeah. you. Fantastic. <laughs> Yes. And you've been with CAFE about three years, so you started really young. Yeah. Now, you were one of the little ones in the group that I've watched, and you play the big drums, yes. the bass drums. Tell me how much fun that is. Well, it's fun because you get different tunes, and I like bass because you get a low tune, mm -hmm. and sometimes you get to play fast, but most of the time, it's just good to play You can sit slow. there and just cruise, right? Yeah. That's what you like about it. Now, why did you want to play that drum? Did you start off wanting to play that or somebody uh, suggested I it? I started off playing tenor mm -hmm. and then uh, for a song they switched me to bass. Oh, and that's when you decided I like this better, yeah. right?
understand you were a third place winner. In Tell the me about county, that. I was the third place winner in the county sci science fair. Oh, you love science? Yeah, science is one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. And math too, I suppose. Yeah. So playing the drums, playing the steel band helps you with math too. Yeah. So you're having a great time. You're an honor student? Yes. Good, congratulations. Thank you. Gabriella Aitchison, you are coming out of eighth grade as well, going into ninth grade yes. this coming September. Uh, tell me, how long have you been involved with music? Did you play the piano or another instrument before? Yes, I played the piano when I was about four or five. Mm -hmm. And then I'm still playing it now. Oh, good. Yeah. And so you have a combination of piano and steel band? And I also play percussion from a band. Oh, you're a percussionist. So. So the steel band comes almost naturally to you then, coming from, from percussion? Um, sort of. So, <laughs> did you have a difficult time learning the steel band? At first, it was pretty hard, but the theory was the best part. What was hard about it? Um, just remembering what notes are where. On the pan? Yeah. yeah. Lot of the academics with cafe? Um, yes, we did a lot of academics here, and actually, it's really helped me with my math. And mm -hmm. their reading projects have been pretty challenging as well. Oh, good. And so, you're an honor student, it's helped yeah. you to maintain that level. Mm -hmm. Good. What do you plan to do later on? Are you interested in pursuing music further? Um, well. My mom usually says music doesn't put bread on the table, <laughs> so I'm going to be an anesthesiologist. Oh, wow. You're really going to put a lot of bread on the table then. Yes. <laughs> the thing I like the most about CAFE is when Everybody comes out for the concerts and stuff, and we have fun. Then we get to travel for the concerts and concerts and stuff. So. Last summer, I decided to go to South Africa. One of my father's friends heard the kids play, and they asked us if we could bring the steel pants to South Africa. <clears throat> so what they did is they set up different tours for us to play at schools and universities um, to introduce the music and to explain how the pan is and um, our culture. So we took the pan, we were there for two weeks, and we um, traveled all over South Africa playing the music. And it was just a, a great experience, one, to give back our culture, to spread the, our culture, spread it, yeah. and also to um, get back something from the South Africans. Make that connection. Right. Yeah. So um, right now I'm have a correspondent with a family from South Africa and what we're trying to do is try to do a kind of like an exchange program mm -hmm. where we can bring our music back there yeah. and CAFE has done that um, I think a couple of years ago when they traveled right to, to Senegal right yeah. to Senegal mm -hmm. so this was a fantastic experience and the kids really started playing about a year and a half mm -hmm. and they still build up a repertoire where it really um, really showed the dynamics of the pan. Of the pan mm -hmm. yeah. And there, uh, uh, what did the children gain from that experience? Do you think? Um, one uh, really is the education about South Africa, mm -hmm. um, meaning what has happened there and right. the struggles. The heritage, the history. Right. Yeah. Um, and then also with the music, they're able to um, really show how the 
how the music is mm. um, in in terms of um, the heart of the music, the heart of the music, the teamwork, the unity. You know how the music really flows. Open to everybody, regardless of creed, race, color, creed, class, or academic level. <laughs> and um, we have a requirement that students who are 3.5 and over really don't have to do the Saturday Academy because we have a Saturday Academy. And um, but the parents still allow you know, to come in. And the Saturday Academy, we need from 10 a.m. to 6.30. And the day is divided up between the math and the music. It's a little more on the music, but what we do with the music, it's, as I said, we use it as a transferable skill. Music is math. When we're teaching theory, you have the fractions, you have your half notes and your quarter notes and so on. And there's a strong correlation between students who are very good. And we, um, we, we've used that technique over the years to, to develop our program. So the kids spend a certain amount of hours a day in the academic, in the academic component. But what they do in the music component is also, uh, yes, transferable and it's part of the academics. We hope you've enjoyed this special presentation on cafes. Until next time, I'm Barry Steele.